Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters. It's Pastor Tim bringing you the prophetic news report this 31st day of May 2023. Can you believe we're winding up May? I mean, it's like time is just flying. I'm at my prayer spot down at my uh, lake in my town. And so I invite you to join me for just a few minutes while I go over some some really critical things that are happening in the geopolitical that definitely tie to the prophetic. Now, I want to begin by the news that Israel, Israel's Minister of Defense has reported that they have discovered off the coast of Israel a natural, a natural gas reserve it is the fourth largest that they have found in the past decade. If you haven't been following, the resources for this nation that is flourishing amongst global economic collapse, a nation the size of the state of New Jersey is significant. It is prophetic. I believe what Vladimir Putin has said, if you do these things or don't do these things, we're going to come down, and, and I believe that the natural resources, the wealth, is what will be the hook in the jaw that Ezekiel prophesied 30, uh, uh, 25 to 2,800 years ago. Those nations that the Bible has prophesied will take action and come down on Israel, are north of Israel, right now in Syria, but we know God himself, according to the word of God, will defend Israel. But anyway, this reserve will produce 68 BCMs per year, and the nation only uses 13 um, billion BCMs per year. So that, so what, what's that mean? Israel is going to be able to monetize that and that's just more wealth that will come into that nation. Be following what is going on and what is happening in the nation of Israel. Jesus said, watch the fig tree, Israel, and watch the other trees, the other nations of prophecy. Meanwhile, in other news, you have a deal. It looks like a deal was made between the speaker, the House Speaker McCarthy and Joe Biden, Joe Biden administration to raise the debt ceiling for two years with, of course, both sides giving it was um, a collaboration or basically we should say a compromise, both sides giving to make this happen, because if they had it, this would be the first time in US history that it did not meet its debt requirements. It's already had an impact on the global markets, but this would have been catastrophic. It truly would have. So in light of all of that going on, I watched his press secretary and other key members of his cabinet address the nation with the press secretary. And I just, I marvel, but not in a good way, at the lies that are spewed. Speaking of the, they keep saying, the historic economic gains and honoring this administration. Well, I want to say to Joe Biden and his administration, we may have been born at night, but not last night. And this is not political, brothers and sisters. I'm not, it's not that I'm picking one. I, I, I'm not getting political here. I'm just speaking truth. They lie to us. The whole globe, it is a staging right now. I'm telling you, in these final moments of the end of days. And so they say things like, we're better economically. We have more jobs. I mean, they go on with rhetoric that is just lies. We know it's lies. 
We are, the common people are not, the blue collar people are not better off financially since two years ago. We are not. Look at the stock markets. Look at inflation in, in a two year period, in the same period, and it's increasing. Inflation went from 1.4% to 6.5%. Gas prices in the same period went from $2.29. I'm talking about the United States to $3.79. Mortgage rates, the interest rates went from 2.9% to 6.5%. And by the way, I spoke with a mortgage rep, a friend of mine, one week ago, come tomorrow, and he said he's doing mortgages now for people with good credit in the 7% range. You go to the grocery store and it costs something like four times more. Ministries are having a hard time meeting needs. I can attest to that um, because of the cost. Now, I want to say to believers, stay in your Goshen. Keep your trust in God. And so we know that we're not better off financially than we are. So you've, you've got Israel having this happen. Meanwhile, Mahmoud Abbas, the president of the Palestinians, has come out, and I believe it's called Nakba. It is, he said, it will be a crime, punishable. Anyone who denies, basically what they're saying is, the horror, the crime against the Palestinians when Israel became a nation on May 14, 1948. So anyone they will hold as a crime. They've made this a law. Why? Because we know what the Bible says. So as we're watching and witnessing everything the Bible said would happen, we know that we are in the final moments of the end of days. I want to tell you, the Bible says, I believe it's 1 Peter, it may be 2 Peter, but 1 Peter 4.17, that judgment begins in the house of the Lord. This is what the Lord told me very clearly, what, you know, as I was praying and spending time with the Lord. That, and when you put that in context, right, Peter's saying, if the world is going to be judged for their rejection of Christ and their wickedness. The judgment is not on the body. What God is wanting to do is purify us. So keep that in perspective. So, and not as a born again believer, not individually. Romans 8, 1 tells us there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And I'll talk about in a moment who's in Christ Jesus. But I want you to understand the things that churches and the body of Christ have compromised on God's standard, has embraced like the LGBTQRXTW40T, whatever they call that agenda, it is wicked. It is wicked. And the embracing of that and everything that the church has allowed evil to now be classified as good, shame on us. That judgment is coming, and it's coming to the house of the Lord first. It's upon us now. What I say to those church leaders, if you know that's you, repent. Turn from that. Change it. Come into alignment with the word of God. I'm not talking about the believer. I'm talking about the church or the churches. So... Because we know that this is a year of judgment and blessings. God is showing up and showing out. Now, how are you a child of God? If you believe the gospel as outlined in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4, we believe in the eternally self-existing God in the persons of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We believe that God the Son, the Son of God, Yeshua HaMashiach, left glory, laid down his glory, was born of a virgin, wrapped in flesh, lived a perfect life, never sinned, and shed his precious blood to pay our sin debt once and for all 
past, present, and future sins. The nanosecond, the raptosecond, the zeptosecond, the instant. You believe he's the Messiah. He died for your sins and rose from the dead. Boom! You are born again and dwelt with Holy Spirit, saved, sealed, and sanctified until the day of redemption, heaven bound, and rapture ready. John 3.16 summarizes it so well. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm a whosoever. Are you a whosoever? Ephesians 2, 8, 9 tells us, For by grace are we saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. Praise God that Jesus shed his precious blood. He cried out on the cross, To tell us die. It is finished. The debt is paid in full. The job is perfectly done. 2 Corinthians 5.21 tells us, For God made him, who's him? Yeshua, Jesus, Jesu, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Praise God. Well, I want to remind you that God loves you fiercely and passionately. He is with you. If you're a born-again believer, he will never leave you. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead abides in you. That means you have resurrection power in you. And greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world. Shalom, shalom, my dear brothers and sisters, and have an awesome rest of your day.